Hi everyone, Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Art Studio and this is going to be a quick video on a little twist. Uh, I had a question come in to me from a YouTuber and I really appreciated the question because I think it needed to be addressed and that is how do you make opaque fabric medium and I believe we can do that. So what I have here, I'm going to just try to slip this under the camera so that you can see it real quick. I know it's going to be upside down, and I'm going to apologize, but it's my low croc binder. Now, um, this is one of the ingredients that I put in with my um, regular fabric medium, whether it's the pearlescent or whether that's plain. And the other thing that I have here is opaque extender. I hope you can see that. Hopefully you can see those words. Um, I'm using my new camera, y'all, but I don't know about, about focusing. I, I haven't mastered it, so, you know, it's going to be time to read the instructions, but trust me when I say if I can get, oh, no, 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 I got to get back. Um, yeah, so you guys are going to get be guinea pigs for my new camera experience here. Anyway, that says opaque extender, and I, hopefully you'll take me at my word. So what I'm going to do here, um, and, and she exclaims enthusiastically, I've also got my primary pigments that we're going to use today to make a tinted fabric medium. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test it on denim. And I have a piece standing by, but I want to make this up first. Because the question was really, what kind of proportions does one use when making pearlescent fabric medium. And I must confess, I am lazy. Um, well, I've told you all this before, I'm a lazy quilter, and I'm kind of a lazy painter. So I've done this in the past by just scooping out some of this and slapping it in my fabric medium and calling it good. But I thought it would behoove us to walk through the steps of creating an actual recipe for making uh, an opaque extender. So here's what I'm going to do first. Um, I've got my handy dandy one teaspoon measuring teaspoon and believe it or not all you have to remember are the parts. So it's one teaspoon or two teaspoons or it's one cup or two cups but how I write my recipes are one part to one other part and uh, this will become more clear as I explain this. So I'm going to take a teaspoon rough and dirty. You can see that. Big old glob, but that's roughly a teaspoon. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll get better and more and, you know, get it all nice and even so we don't have too much. And I'm going to set that aside. And I'm going to do it right here smack dab in the middle of my thing. I'm going to also use a smaller spoon, a little plastic spoon that I have here on hand to scoop out the rest. Okay. And we yeah, will get a little, this is like making a cake. Yeah, your recipe is always going to be slightly off. All right, so that's the opaque extender. Now I'm going to reach for my low crock binder, give it a little swirl, make sure it's shook up. Um, I've never seen sediment at the bottom, but I always follow their instructions, which says to shake well. So I'm going to measure out roughly a teaspoon of this. Now this is kind of like milk, so it's definitely thickish. Um, and that was the question too, did I need to thin this down once it's mixed? Well, we're going to find out because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make up tinted fabric medium. And the reason I'm doing this is because believe it or not, I have classes in Dallas here in a couple of weeks and we're actually going to be using a lot of tinted fabric medium. Also in testing this today, I think this will give me an idea whether or not color goes on opaquely which is really what you want in having an opaque fabric medium. Okay, so I'm going to take a few drops, and when I say a few drops, I mean absolutely one. Okay, I mean, come on, hang on. Might help if I squeeze the stopper. One, oops, ooh, this stuff is very thick too. Okay, there's one drop. Let's see if I can get more. Two drop. Three drop, four drop. All right, that's it. Honestly, I don't want any more because this stuff is super, 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 super concentrated. By the way, the color is going to be holly berry. I can always use a good red. 
So now what I'm going to do is just kind of mix this all around and see what kind of consistency we get. Now it's going to take a bit, so I'll probably speed this up. Okay, now I'm back, and um, I'm going to put the cap on this opaque stuff so I can move it out of the way, um, hang on to it for just a bit because I may be doing more mixing with it, move it off to the side. And now what I want to do, I'm going to move my color mixes out of the way as well. Now what I want to do is bring out the denim. And I have chosen some very very, very dark denim, as you can see. Let me scooch this over here just a bit. And I, the best test is just to do, you know, the old paintbrush test. And let's see if it goes on or how it goes on. Well, I'm going to be frank with you. I think that's a bit thin. Now, I can tell it's pink, which is obviously what we got kind of here, a dark pink, salmon pink. And... That's going on. Here, let me hold this up because, once again, I think it's going to be better if you can see this up close. So you can tell, I mean, yes, is it pink? Sure, it's pink. Is it opaque pink? Well, it's certainly more opaque than it would be than if we tried to use something translucent. So here's going to be my next step. Because I think this is a tiny bit too watery. You can do one or two things. You could start all over and cut the uh, low crock binding down by half. Or what I think I prefer to do is to grab some more of the opaque extender and thicken this up a bit. So I'm going to pull that over here real quick. Again, I think this time I'm going to go... I'm actually going to go ahead for a full another scoop. So again, this is another teaspoon. Now what this now means is what we have is two parts opaque extender to one part low crock binder. And let's see if we can get this out. All right. So now I'm mixing up my fabric medium. Now I will tell you what this is going to do for tinted fabric medium is it's certainly going to make it lighter. It doesn't look like by much. I'm telling you, y'all, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not in the back pocket of Color Art. I am just one heck of a satisfied customer. They have great mixing pigments. Uh, it's called her Purely Pigments line. And uh, she's coming out with a third set here, I think, uh, end of April, 1st of May. And I'm really looking forward to it because I really think they're such high quality products. And for a lot of my classes, because I'm going to start teaching with more paints instead of pencils and markers, I need to make up large batches. And having a super concentrated paint to mix in with fabric medium, like I'm doing here, is just the ticket. All right. Now, because it is slightly more light pink. I do think I want to get another drop into the mix to kind of get it the same color that I had before. So again, mm. All right, now I'm back, and this is a kind of more of a dark salmony pink. So let's test it next to this one again. Um, certainly, it's going on darker, but mm, that's definitely got more coverage than this one, and I don't think it's because of the additional color, I think it's a, a because of the additional um, opaque extender that I put in it. Now, I'm happy with that. So let me bring it closer up to the camera 
so that you can take a look. So C versus that other one, even though there's a color difference, there's still just much better coverage on the denim um, to begin with. So I would consider that to be a success. I mean, if I were making up opaque fabric medium just by itself, that's exactly what I would do right there. So it would be two parts opaque extender to one part low crock binder. And frankly, I don't think you need to thin this down. I think the consistency is great. The consistency reminds me of thick cream, which is often the way acrylic paints come through as, as kind of like thickish. Um, I'm actually going to save this. This is great. I have a little container here. And I'll put some, oh, quick tip, quick tip. Um, I'm going to pull it out real quick. This is what I use. I think I may have mentioned this in another video, but when you need to seal a jar that does not have an auto sealer, da 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 da, da best press. Pull off a piece of this stuff, put it on the top, then screw the top on. It won't last forever but it does a really good job of prolonging your paint. So, so there you have it. Um, happy with this. I think it's certainly, well, I'm gonna use this paint and I'm like, again, let's do another test here real quick. Again, on the, um, on the lighter side. Oh yeah, so see, that's a second coat. And I'm always, I can almost tell you that most of the time when I'm using dark fabric backgrounds like this, I put on at least two coats and probably closer to three at times. So don't be surprised if that's what you have to do to get a really good strong pink color like I've got right there. So as always, thanks for watching. I'm going to apologize profusely for the camera. I promise the next time I use this, I will figure this out. Oh, hi, okay, this is a quickie um, to show you kind of what the dried results look like. So this is probably three layers on the second coloring, and this is three layers on this one. So I think you can see that the two parts opaque extender to one part low crock binder is definitely a better way to go. And you might say to yourself, well, what if I went three parts? Well, then I think what you're going to see is three parts op uh, opaque fat extender to one part low crock. I think you would start seeing it getting pretty chalky. Um, this is low crock binder. This little white right here, a little bit of it. And it's very chalky. It's very stiff. So I think you'd want to be careful adding too much more onto it. I find that when I have done this using acrylic paints or the resin paints or the vivid intense paints or anything that I've painted on this dark denim, Really, the best way to do it is to layer the color in thin layers. And that's what I was trying to do here. So take this for what it's worth. Um, if someone out there does do an experiment and, and uses this blend and it's successful, please let us all know how it goes. As always, thanks for watching.